Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna look at a side-by-side -side comparison between two 15-inch woofers. And this is also kind of a, a new product feature that I'd like to do as well. This is a back-loaded horn design designed for a 15-inch woofer. And so this was a design and build commission that was finished lot during the holidays and got shipped out. Prior to shipping out, I decided to do this comparison just for my own interests and uh, and see if the uh, Supervox here was better than the Bema, which I featured in other uh, blog tests and that. And so the the Supervox is a thousand dollars more than the Bema, and so it's a field coil. And so the idea here with this comparison is to see if the field coil technology offered by Supervox uh, outperforms the Bema woofer and whether that cost increase is worth uh, worth it. So, um, so we're going to be testing distortion and frequency response and looking at 85 and 95 dB test signal and seeing uh, how much better the field coil is compared to the Bema, uh, if, if at all. So, uh, so let's look at the design of the cabinet itself. So this is base cabinet 2095. And so I designed it in horn rasp and it's made from 30 millimeter thick uh, birch ply. And so it's, it was shipped out as a three-way kind of a turnkey build using the ES450 by radial and then the uh, 2258 super tweeter. Um, and so it measures 58 centimeters wide, 96 tall, and then 63 centimeters deep. Uh, the, this particular project as well was sent out with the bird's eye veneer with solid bird's eye front uh, accent cover just to conceal the, um, the, the woofer mounting screws. So you can see there, I think it looks really neat, uh, really clean looking, especially with the Bema, um, with the rings, kind of has a classic look to it. So for uh, the testing, I started out with frequency response in room at one meter. So just uh, bear with me here. Being in Canada, it's difficult this time of year to measure outdoors. And so this is why I've used the one third octave smoothing, just so you kind of get a general idea of what's happening. It's gonna include room reflections. You can see this dip here. Um, and so the green is the Bema and then the red is the Supervox. And so uh, key takeaways from this is that the Bema is about three or four dB more sensitive than the Supervox and uh, we're getting quite a bit more output in the lower base. And so you can see here that we're approaching 105 dB sensitivity at one watt uh, with the Bema. Now the, the Supervox kind of has a gradual roll off near breakup, uh, but we are crossing with a, a 300 Hertz low pass uh, for this specific build. And so we're just kind of looking at what's happening through the base and through the uh, mid base. And you can see here the blue is an overlay of the impedance curve for the Bema. Okay, so when I tested the distortion, I set both cabinets side by side with the Supervox uh, to the left and then the Bema to the right. You can see here my microphone's positioned kind of between the horn mouth and the uh, driver. And so when I tested the one, uh, I would simply move, tested the one and then I wanted to test the next, I would simply move the microphone uh, in front of the other speaker and then change the speaker inputs to the, to the other cabinet. And so the reason I'm showing this, um, I actually had to measure and do the tests twice just because I wanted to be 100% sure that I hadn't introduced variables into my test setup. And so I'm just showing you a picture of how I conducted the measurements um, and how much care, I guess, was taken to make sure that it's consistent. Okay, and so I tested it at the 85 and the 95 dB test signal and then uh, directly compared the intermodulation distortion between the two drivers. Okay, so the, uh, the specific models, I don't uh, think I mentioned it, but it's the 15LX60V2 uh, from Bema, and then the Supervox is um, the 380EXC here. So you can, there's a link uh, to it in my blog, and the blog uh, link is in, my, in the description there. So it's a 380EXC, which has the heavy duty uh, voice coil for the increased power handling. That's an option from Supervox. I should too mention 
uh, that the customer originally specified the Supervox drivers and prior to shipment I decided to do this comparison just out of my own interest sake so um, looking at distortion so the Bema has uh, minus 63 dB intermodulation distortion performance for the 150 Hertz region so you can see here at around 150 Hertz if we can count we can see that it's about 150 okay now or sorry it's about minus 63 uh, dB now when we move to the Supervox we actually see uh, significantly increased distortion uh, 9 dB higher distortion for that particular region you can see here how the distortion is, is quite a bit higher uh, compared to the BEMA now if we increase the test SPL from 85 dB to 95 dB um, we can see here with the BEMA that distortion also increases and so we're now at minus 53 dB intermodulation distortion looking at what happens at the higher test SPL uh, with the Supervox we can see that distortion is at minus 50 dB uh, for the for the 150 Hertz region okay so uh, we're seeing uh, with both test SPLs that both uh, in both instances the Supervox is quite a bit higher distortion than the Bema. The next thing to do uh, was to look at the harmonic distortion and so same test signal level 85 dB we can see that the Bema is below 0.1 percent for the 100 Hertz region and then it rises slightly above 0.1 uh, for the 200 Hertz region. So same test for the Supervox, we can see that there's a bump in distortion centered at around 80 hertz that uh, is almost at the 1% distortion. Um, now, increasing the test SPL to 95, uh, we see that distortion for the BEMA rises just slightly above the 0.1% mark uh, for the base region. And then as we go and look at the Supervox, we see that the H2 which is a second harmonic it's pushing above 1% uh, for the 80 Hertz region um, otherwise the third and fourth harmonics do remain uh, low okay so um, conclusion on this just very generally uh, I should note that you know measuring indoors is, is problematic and that you're going to get room reflections in that but nonetheless I think that we're I was able to collect some some useful data uh, one thing uh, that I was worth noting is the high sensitivity uh, particularly with the BEMA uh, approaching 105 dB in room. Um, now the design was specified uh, for 50 Hertz and so I, we can see that we're getting flat to 40 Hertz. Uh, conclusion as well is that the BEMA outperformed the, the Supervox in terms of low distortion. So, Okay, so just uh, subjective listening on the design overall. Um, now, I, with both woofers, uh, they sound excellent. Uh, there's a very nuanced, palpable uh, sensation to the bass itself. And so with it being high sensitivity, I had it connected to the uh, little Fosse uh, TDA and then the models right there which is about 50 watts per channel um, so just even with that low amount of power it could deliver a uh, very serious output and I would consider definitely concert level bass um, I decided then to connect it to the Hypex FA501 which is uh, I believe it's 250 watts at 8 ohm and so it was able to achieve 114 dB at one meter uh, from a single cabinet um, and so I was a little bit concerned with the design uh, from the get-go that there would be a disconnect between the out, like perceptible disconnect uh, in terms of delay between the horn output and the output of the driver because of the, the physical horn path length difference. So I was careful not to overdo it with the design in trying to achieve you know ultra low bass which means making the horn even longer um, but what I what I found was there was no perceptible delay whatsoever so uh, and in fact what I found was that there was an immediacy to the sound and I can only attribute that and I'm just speculating but it would I, I would attribute that to the low diaphragm velocity of the driver 
simply because the horn loading is is minimizing the actual movement of the diaphragm and there's a tremendous amount of output coming out of the horn mouth as a result of the of the horn loading and so what i got was a very uh, dynamic, intense, and powerful sound, um, and I, I, I felt like it really coupled to the air in the room, and it activated the uh, the air in the room very, very well. So, um, subjectively, I found that the Bema sounded very similar to the Supervox. There wasn't, like, in the end, very much of a difference uh, between the subjective sound quality. Um, so. This is more of an academic. We're looking at very, very low distortion uh, regardless of which driver we're looking at. But uh, it's just interesting to see that in an objective sense, um, there, there doesn't appear to be any advantage uh, of the field coil technology from Supervox. So um, I think I covered it all. So that's it. Take care and have a great day.